<clears throat> Today we're going to do a fill pass and a cap. A couple of things about this. Uh, not really heat sensitive. I'm, I'm thinking I'm gonna, you know, we got schedule 80, so I'm gonna go ahead and put 120 amps on this thing with a 332nd wire. What I intend to do here is, we've got a horizontal weld. I wanna fill it up in one pass and I can do that. And my technique, my personal technique that works well for me is I'll leave the filler wire on the top part of the bevel in the groove. I will also make my tungsten go kind of in a diagonal. To me, what that does is it makes my weld pool kind of stay at the top. Even though I'm weaving at a diagonal, the bead pattern lays in kind of flat. The filler, the filler metal chases the arc. So by doing those two things, leaving this at the top, and going at a diagonal, to me, it lays in there nice and flat. And then I don't have to worry about cupped out at the top and sagging on bottom or any of that kind of stuff. To finish this out, we just want to run a freehand two bead cap, okay? Now I know some of you will say, go ahead and just do the, just go ahead and walk the cap in there in a single pass. I just want to show a two bead cap today. So, I'm gonna pull, I've got my ground over here. Let me grab my stuff, we'll get on it. Again, I'm running 120 amps. I'm kind of going diagonal with my arc. But I have my filler wire at the top of the groove. Got a fill pass in here. I've left the bottom edge so I can see it. This is slightly fuller at the top and I like that. I'm gonna let it cool off a little bit before we commence our two bead cap. I will probably do the same thing and just draw this in here freehand. A try to anyway, been a long time since I've done that, but I'll give it a go. I'm gonna wire wheel this, buff it all up, let it cool off, we'll come back and do our cap. This is the first bead of a two bead cap. Cleaned the pipe pretty good. Buffed it out. I'm still hanging that wire on the top of my intended bead here. And I'm bringing the pool down where it just kind of melts out that bottom beveled edge. Trying to stay out of the camera guy's way, so I've got my kind of in an uncomfortable spot here, but. Oh man, I got them pretty good here. I've, I've got reinforcement where I was hanging my head back, trying to stay out of the camera guy's way. I've got a little bit of a depression here, so I may need to manipulate further down into my bead. I'm not real happy with that. It's a little, it's a little flat. We're gonna roll though. Get over here, torch. I'm not done with you yet. This time I'm looking at the top edge to make sure that I'm not undercutting the top. Again, I'm doing the diagonal thing again. As Cheech Marin would say, oh, he's doing that diagonal thing, man. Well, I'm not undercut. I'm not real happy. I've got a little bit of wave in here. Does it work? Yeah. Am I happy with it? No. It's not pretty. It's not pretty, pretty. But it's effective. I've got reinforcement on the bottom. I've got reinforcement on the top, no undercut. I just, it's that center blend in there. Again, small bore pipe. I'm trying to hang my head around here to get out of my guy's way here, but, uh, and there's other methods, you know, there's other methods of walking the cup. I just chose to do this to demonstrate it. Kind of rolled my wrist around the pipe. Uh, is it hot? 
it's good and warm, but I don't put a lot, I don't put my hands hard on the pipe. I just kind of a real light pressure to slip on there. I hope this helps. I hope it was educational. Uh, it's not perfect and I'll own up to that. I haven't done one of these in quite some time. That's not an excuse. I just haven't practiced one in quite a while, but I plan on practicing this one a little bit more. Again, did the fill. Remember that diagonal method and experiment with leaving the filler wire on the top part so that it doesn't wash out on bottom like I did right here. Thanks for subscribing to Weld.com. Check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Thanks for watching.